you, by the way, for your lovely comments regarding that picture in a recent video I posted with Simon Cowell. Of course, to many people, he is the doyen of, well, first off, American Idol, and then, of course, the British and US X Factor. Great, successful series for him. Uh, an incredible rise to the top. You know, as I say, I worked with him many, many years ago, late 80s, early 90s. When he was struggling, he genuinely was, and it was his hard work, tenacity, ideas, push through, and, of course, all of those lucky breaks that you need in between that made him the super mogul that he is today. Of course, he has other shows and, you know, he's taken a step back recently over the last few years. Well, when you've made that much money, do you need to work that hard? That could be the question. But of course, fallouts really were everywhere. If you recall, X Factor had a falling out with American Idol. Oh yes, Simon Fuller and Simon Cowell at a massive bust up. And only a few years ago now, and this was dubbed, of course, the Clash of the Talent Titans. Titans. But I wanted to draw your attention to another clash of talent titans that was even bigger and far more expensive way back in the 1950s. Let me explain. Morning, nice to see you. Thank you so much on this. Sort of lovely to have a wave. I know I keep getting told off. You haven't waved, Neil. I know I haven't waved. You know, you get engrossed in the story. Well, you do, don't you? <laughs> I mean, you just do, don't you? Of course, you get told off if you don't do it. And as we know, we have a lot of our pets and friends watching at the same time. So if they're raising a paw, we need to raise a paw, right? Yes. Daft, aren't we? But it's fun, you know what I mean? <laughs> Back as ever to your story. Now, it's interesting, this, because uh, this is a big story. In fact, I met many people who worked for this uh, very famous in his day, uh, Canadian broadcaster, Carol Levis. Who remembers Carol Levis' discoveries on the radio? It was a very early format of a talent show. And as I said, I met people who actually appeared on the show and uh, got to know him quite well. He was a very clever guy, you know, quite debonair. And really, because of that time, having that wonderful Canadian accent, was able to sort of convince people that uh, he had this great, vast knowledge of talent, you know. But really, all he was was an MC, uh, a sort of actor who who hadn't quite made it and then decided to become a compare. What he did was he toured that particular show up and down and around the world uh, over here in the United Kingdom as Carol Levis's BBC Discoveries. You see, if you appeared on his show, say in a local theatre, what would happen was he would cherry pick you to appear on the radio show. A very big deal way back in the late 40s, early 50s. No two ways about it. And he was clever, you see, in filling the theatre because what he did was he would put the young children on the axe in the second half of the show, meaning that all all the family and friends would have to buy tickets, you know, mum, dad, aunties, uncles, fill in the theatre. He was on a percentage of the box office, made him incredibly rich. Then a thorn in his side came his way in the shape of another talent show titan, Mr. Huey Green. Now you see, Carol Levis was on the BBC and the newly discovered Radio Luxembourg decided to have Opportunity Knox, a format that had been put together by the boy discovery of his time, Huey Green, and this, well, ran for one series. Now it got shut down with legal ramifications simply because the BBC said this particular format was too similar to their own, you know, discoveries hosted by Carol Levis. This literally ended up in a massive legal battle which went all the way to the High Court. Fascinating, isn't it, when you think about it? Because really, you know, these shows could have been very lucrative for both channels. You know, ratings for the BBC, certainly commercial viability uh, for the new Radio Luxembourg. Now, what was interesting was it got all the way to the High Court and Carol Levis pushed hard and fast to make sure that he didn't lose. Back into the BBC, of course, he was able to reign triumphantly. And sadly for Huey Green, he ended up having to pay quite a lot of money. This wasn't resolved in, until 1958. But by that point, you know, commercial television had now taken hold and they were looking for formats and they cast their eye over to Huey Green's Opportunity Knox. Now, if you haven't seen the show, you he did a splendid job. Forget what people say about him behind the scenes. We're looking at him professionally. I met him myself in the 90s, you know. He was kind of an embittered man by then because he'd been treated badly uh, also by Thames Television. Some say for his political views. Others, of course, simply because he wielded too much power. 
power. But he was a man, literally, who held real court over the ratings for decades over on the commercial channel. What's fascinating, though, is, as I say, they decided to go along with Opportunity Knox, and that created a mega smash show for the commercial channel. Mega ratings, mega commercial sponsorship deals, and more importantly, lots of money for Huey Green. Now, it's interesting, isn't it, to think, because Carol Levis, as I often say here on the show, has kind of, you know, gone into the ether. People seemingly now don't remember him, but there were many people who went on his shows. Possibly the most famous was a lady called Violet Pretty, who went on to become a film star. But I'd throw this out there to you. Did you ever go on for a Carol Levis Discovery audition? Or indeed, did you appear on the show? What was he like to you? As I say, you know, there was nothing but good reports. But behind the scenes, they ruled these talent shows truly with a rod of iron. Fascinating to think, isn't it? And as I said at the start of this video, we often think, don't we, that, oh, you know, this was a battle between the two Simons and it will happen again, you know, with some other commercial people on television or radio or literally in the digital platforms. But either way, it's all happened before. As ever, thank you so much for taking the time out to watch. Please do like and share and comment. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.